Okay, so I saw Blade Runner, the original film, for the first time ever before I saw Blade Runner 2049. And it was okay. Um, just to put it short and sweet, I think it's an okay movie. I just thought it was pretty dull. How does the long-awaited sequel turn out? A sequel that literally came out 35 years after the original film. Let's find out. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Blade Runner 2049. So Blade Runner 2049 is directed by Denis Villeneuve and the film stars Ryan Gosling, Ana de Armas, and Harrison Ford, oh yeah, Jared Leto as well, and Robin Wright. So when it comes to the plot synopsis of Blade Runner 2049, and I'm really gonna be careful, focuses on this new Blade Runner named Kay, who is trying to discover a secret, and it eventually leads him to team up with Rick Deckard. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all. I'm going to say because there is so much more to the storyline than what I just told you. Blade Runner 2049 is a film I was incredibly excited for and I have not even seen the original film but it was just based on the teaser and the rest of the trailers as time was going by that I was so excited and of course it did make me want to see the original film. So with Blade Runner 2049, this being a sequel to an original film I personally didn't care for. Does this sequel actually improve upon the original film? Is this a sequel I can actually sit here and say I liked? At least liked. <sighs> Guys, I gotta be honest. I didn't like Blade Runner 2049. I loved Blade Runner 2049. That's right. I love this movie. I really, really love this movie. Blade Runner 2049 improves over the original film in every way. This is what I wanted the original film to be. What I didn't get with the original film, I got with 2049. Now, let's go ahead and just talk about the running time. The first film was only like two hours, a little under two hours, I believe. So for this film to be two hours and 45 minutes, Wow, I was not bored once with this film. I totally understand why some people would watch this film and say they didn't like it because it was way too long. I can understand that for sure. Or even the people that really like this film but they say it's maybe 20, 25 minutes too long. I can understand that too. For some odd reason, even though it has that long running time, I was not bored once with Blade Runner 24 Night. I gotta be honest, from the opening scene, just from the opening scene alone, I was already sucked into the film. The script in this film is absolutely brilliant. Now, something about the original film. The original film had cool ideas within this futuristic world. It really did. But they just didn't make them as interesting as they could have. The ideas, the themes, that are explored in Blade Runner 2049. Not only are they cool, but they actually do something very interesting with those ideas. They actually make the themes in this film just so compelling. And one of the things that I did truly love about Blade Runner 2049 is that it is a sequel that does respect the original film, and there are certain callbacks to the original film, but even if you're someone that has not seen the original film, you can still follow the storyline and not be confused watching this film. Aside from some callbacks to the original film, it is its own story. The writing truly is fantastic. 
fantastic in this film. From the dialogue, from the interactions between the characters, from where the film was taking with all of these plot points, it's absolutely brilliant. Especially, of course, I'm being very careful when reviewing this, by the way, but especially when you get to that ending. It's absolutely beautiful. Not only is this a very, very masterfully written film, I'm actually going that far. This is a masterfully written movie, but the direction by, by Denis Villeneuve is also truly masterful. This is one of the best directed movies I've not only seen this year, but just ever. What Denis Villeneuve did with this film, the way he takes you into this world, this sci-fi world, and this film does take place 30 years after the original film, the way he just tells the story truly was so incredible. I'll be honest, there's even times where I forgot I was sitting in the theater watching this film. I really, really felt like I was transporting the Blade Runner 2049. And as far as the cinematography goes, it is so beautifully shot. The cinematography is gorgeous. It is done by Roger Deakins, who's known for doing cinematography for movies like Skyfall or The Shawshank Redemption. And wow, I could not believe how colorful this movie is. It's so well shot that I literally can't take my eyes off of it. I really can't compliment the cinematography enough. This is truly breathtaking cinematography right here and this movie might even have the best cinematography I've seen all year. This might actually be the best cinematography of 2017 and that's saying a lot because there's a ton and I mean a ton of movies with gorgeous cinematography. War for the Planet of the Apes being one of them, Okja being one of them, Brigsby Bear being one of them, the list goes on from there. But wow, the cinematography really did blow me away so much in this feature. And because this is a movie that does move at a snail's pace, there is not a lot of action sequences, just like with the original film. You know, the original film didn't really have a lot of action sequences, and Blade Runner 2049 definitely does continue that style here. But except I thought the style here was done way better than the original film, at least for me personally, uh, because as slow paced as it is, I just found it to be more engrossing. But when there are action sequences in Blade Runner 2049, once again, not a whole lot, but when it is there, it is incredibly well filmed. It is very exciting. It had me at the edge of my seat, especially in the climax. Now, as far as performances, I really have to be careful because this this can't be really one of those reviews where I go character by character. I, I unfortunately have to be minimal when it comes to discussing characters that are in this film. I will start off with Ryan Gosling and say that he is fantastic in this film as K, the new Blade Runner. It was really fascinating following Ryan Gosling in this film. And yes, of course, Harrison Ford is back here and I'll get to him in just a sec. But yes, even though Harrison Ford is in this film, ultimately, this is really more of Ryan Gosling's movie. This is really more of Kay's storyline. And that could probably be a problem if I didn't find this character that engaging. But because I care for the character, because I really felt what the character was feeling. I didn't really have a problem that more of the focus was on Ryan Gosling's character K. I found this character to be truly great. I mean already from the opening scene I thought this character was truly great. He really does such a terrific job as a new Blade Runner and now I can get to Harrison Ford as Rick Decker. Harrison Ford, the 1982 film, he's he was great. His role was great and definitely the best character when it comes to the original film no doubt and while he's not technically the main star this time around for what he was given in this film he really was great and it was so cool to actually see rick deckard older rick deckard 
actually teaming up with this generation's Blade Runner, Ryan Gosling, aka K. And without really getting too deep into his character, it's just really interesting to see how far his character has come because in this film, you can tell that he's experienced so much in his life and basically you could just tell that he isn't the same person that we once knew from the original film. That's all I'm going to say and how that was handled I thought was absolutely terrific. Jared Leto, man, I, I really can't say much with him. All I'm going to say is absolutely fantastic performance. Robin Wright also really great in this film. There's a certain antagonist which I can't really discuss but this actress that played the certain antagonist I will just go ahead and say she terrified me. I was very scared by her presence and Ana de Anmas really is great in this film. I don't want to say too much about her role but I did really like what her role served and there's other characters in this film I can't really bring up or talk about but all I'm gonna really say is the other characters that do appear were really engaging the other performances were really engaging and of course it would be an absolute crime if I did not talk about the score in this film the score in the first film is truly fantastic. That's definitely one of the biggest compliments I could give the first film was its score and the visuals too. And speaking of visuals, this movie is truly breathtaking. It's honestly, seriously unbelievable how real these visuals look. And it really does help having me very immersed in this extraordinary atmosphere. But as far as the score goes, it really does still capture the Blade Runner feel that the score in the original had. And it's composed by Hans Zimmer, one of the best music composers. Hans Zimmer did such an incredible job of composing the score for Blade Runner 2049. This is one of the best scores I've honestly have uh, ever heard. It's truly unbelievable just how great the score is in this film. Really did fit the atmosphere. The world building in Blade Runner 2049 really was just so fascinating to me. I really don't know how Denis Villeneuve did it. And the tone in this film is so impressive because the thing about Blade Runner 2049 when you look into its plot, it is dark, it's haunting, but it's also beautiful at the same time. And it's really, really hard to talk about it, but yeah. Also, I almost forgot to bring him up, but Dave Batista, for what he had in this film, really, really great. Just wanted to give him a shout out because he really was great in this film. As far as negatives go with Blade Runner 2049, they really are not all that huge. In fact, I would say my flaws are more like nitpicks, to be honest. For nitpick number one, I feel like that Jared Leto could have had more to do. Um, without spoiling anything, he was truly, and I do mean, he's truly, truly fantastic for what he has. But I do think when it comes to his character, I think the film could have done a little bit more with him. As far as really my other nitpick with this film, I'd say there is a setup scene that didn't necessarily belong in the film, and it could be if we ever get a third Blade Runner possibly or not, but the setup scene I didn't think really needed to be in the film. Overall, Blade Runner 2049 is a masterpiece, even with those couple of nitpicks I just finished bringing up it does not it doesn't take away from how truly masterful this film is this is what I want the original to be but it 
failed to be. And, and honestly, I'm so glad this was made. I am really, really glad this is a sequel that was made from beginning to end. I found the storyline to be so engrossing. The action sequences are captivating when it's there. The climax in this film really did take my breath away without really saying much, but wow, what a climax. This movie blew me away and from the way I've been talking it really should not surprise any of you at this point that I 22 Tiger Dude am going to give Blade Runner 2049 four out of four stars. So everybody in the comments down below, let me know what did you think about Blade Runner 2049? Before I continue on with the question, I just want to bring up that I did review Blade Runner 1982 with Justin Watches Movies. I got to collaborate with him in preparation of Blade Runner 2049. Thank you so much, Justin. And if you all want to check out that review, I will leave a link in the description down below. And I recommend checking out Justin's channel in general as well. Which Blade Runner film did you like better? Did you like the first better? Did you like the sequel better? Were you a fan of either of these films? I'd be very interested to know what you guys definitely think. This is 22 Tiger Dude here. And don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.